All right, everybody, we just got done with the Red Block factory tour. Not only the manufacturing of the block, however, we also were in where they make the entire panelized wall system, which you're seeing behind me. That is glued together, and then you use the pick points on the top, and these walls are set on the job site in place, which we're getting ready to go see. Now, what's so awesome about this, WASH, World of Smart Homes, is now taking this technology along with Red Blocks and other collaborators, and it's gonna start having full MEP systems in it as well. That means your electrical conduit, your electrical boxes, uh, your meter boxes, windows, all going into it. And guess what? With their system, you pretty much don't need air conditioning because it holds a nice steady temperature all year round. So let's go see how they're put together. Let's go to a job site and uh, we'll take it from there. All right, here we are. We finally made it to the job site. Standing behind me are multi-family buildings. There's four units in each two-story units. Behind us on this side over here, I'd say in front of us, is some finished projects, and we're gonna show that to you as well. Marcus, how about we go take a look on how this is all coming together and show everybody out there what Red Block's all about. Yeah. Let's do it, come on. Right now we're looking in the door to one of the homes and one of the great things is it's all hydronic floor heating here. As you can see down here, uh, it's through the entire first floor of the house. Haven't been to the second floor yet, but I'm sure it's up there as well. But you can also see the plastering that's happening on the inside and outside of the red block system. This is how it all comes together and we're gonna keep walking you through the job site. This piece of equipment here is what they call a silo. So think about when you are doing your radiant floor heating as we're seeing in these buildings. This already has the water and the floor concrete mix or whatever the mix is gonna be for the floors in it. They deliver it just like we're seeing here. It's not completely hooked together yet, but they'll end up pushing a button. It'll mix the water, it'll mix the concrete or the floor mixture and give you exactly what you need it when you need it just by pushing the button. That's cool stuff. No more waiting for trucks. Is that the same crane that put the walls in place? Correct. That kind of crane is the most effective crane yeah. for our elements and for prefab construction because you reach a vast area on yeah. one hand uh, they have a good, a good load uh, characteristic, and they are so fast. If yeah. you if you combine that, or if you if you compare that to a to a mobile crane, you know this big mobile cranes, you yeah. need a sixty tonner at least. Right. That is so slow. Yeah. You are double as fast with this. Oh, I see. He sits up there. Yeah. Is it remote control? Uh, yeah, he can even control it from down here. Down here. Yeah, you don't see this on job sites. Not in America. We have cranes, but usually. Uh, yeah, but you know, that kind of crane makes sense if you are building things like that. Yes, I guess. It starts making sense when you're building things like that. All right, listen, we're inside the, the, the starting phases of this red block house currently as we speak. As you can see over here, this is a marker and I'll show you in the plaster wall on the other side, but this is marking where the outlets are gonna go or where a meter is gonna go or thermostat, whatever the case is. Then they plaster over and then it has the red sticking out so you know exactly where it's gonna go. Now, if we look on this side here, you can see all the electrical conduit coming in from the wall or from the ceiling. Now, 
The way this is being done now, like this, is not the way it's gonna be done in the future. All of the MEPs, such as wires, are now gonna start getting set up to where they can be pre-installed in the walls already with outlets installed, uh, or at least the junction box area. So what we're seeing here is kind of 2.0. What you're getting ready to see with the red block system and the wash system that's coming out is these wires and MEPs will actually be installed in this well. Now again, remember, it looks like a block stacked wall, huh? but don't be fooled. This is one entire wall section that was delivered and set on site. A project like this only takes a day or two probably to get most of these walls in and ready. So Marcus, were these stairs poured on site? No. No. They come in as prefabricated stairs from concrete prefab plants. Yeah. They, usually the ones that are producing the ceilings are also producing the stairs. Okay. Uh, so you get them in very different shapes and forms right in this case we have it rounded uh, you also get them straight up sure that is the common way of, of building here because doing it on the job site takes a lot of time a lot of work and here it's perfectly exact you have important is as you mentioned the meter yeah. because this is the reference point for everything in here for every window for the stairs for the height of the floor for the height of the insulation underneath everything refers to that particular point everything everything outlets whatever all of it. yeah whatever all so measures that's kind of their laser mark correct so they can set everything else through. correct Got it, got That's it. That's very important. So the stairs are, are from first floor to second floor, one solid piece. Correct. Um, these ones are up so high because here they're going to actually put, it, put down uh, their vapor barrier to stop any moisture from coming up. Then they're going to put their insulation and then they're going to run their radiant floor heating on this. So at that point, that gives us the standard, you know, safety height or whatever. It's somewhere here. Somewhere here yep. for the stair system uh, that goes upstairs. and. Uh, around back, uh, Vince will show you, you can see the full stairs going up on that. Now, with the stairs though, the walls are put in first. First you put in the walls and then you put in the stair element. This is one lift with the crane and that's it. Right, right. So one lift in the crane and that, that is it. And then the same thing with the floor above. Correct. that we're going to go up and take a look at yeah. uh, we, we is precast as well. That's precast as well. We make it as we call it filigrane plates. They're about four centimeters reinforced concrete with this triangle reinforcements on top mm -hmm. and they set it on the walls. Then they support it with uh, special supporting systems. You will see that. Yeah. Then they put the concrete if this is the point when you can take out the angular supports from the walls, then the box is, as we said before, is finished. All right, and that's it. Correct. What stops these stairs from sliding out? Uh, it's fixed. It's just fixed into place mechanically. Mechanically fixed, yeah. yeah. These wow. are the, the lifting points. This right. is yeah, where, that's you, where you the crane hook goes. Yeah, you, you have yeah. something like this. Yeah, pumps on it. And uh, then you lift it up and All right. All right. put it in with the crane. Well, let's go upstairs and take a look. These were the angled brackets we were talking about. Correct, as you saw it in the company. And the install on this is just a hammer drill screw, just to lock it in. That's it. Doop, 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 doop. Done. Done. Right, quick. Finished. Uh -huh. With that, you control the right angle. Yep. Because you can turn that, and by then turning it gets longer or shorter. Got it. So this adjusts yeah. the up and down of the. Correct. Yep. But. And here you have the beams, which are the support for the ceilings. Yeah. You need to support uh, the filigrane blades mm -hmm. until you pour the concrete plus 28 days, because that's the time sure. that concrete needs yeah. to cure. Mm -hmm. So after 28 days, you can take off these supports here. Those can go, as I said, when the ring anchor is yeah. poured. And Those are the filigrane plates that you're talking about, the right. ones that are lifting in, the, that are dropping Correct. in. Correct. That's not the floor, then the floor goes on top of that. Uh, you put, you pour the concrete on top of those plates, yep. right. and by that you get a 20 centimeter plate, which forms the, the ceiling to the next. In this right. case, it's the last floor, or maybe to the next floor. And we can continue working though, yeah. even while that's curing. Correct. Yeah. You can put the next wall the next day. The next day. The next. On floor. the next floor. Yeah. Got it. 
Got it. So you can pour the concrete, and next day you're putting the walls yeah. up. You just need to leave the supports for 28 days yeah. to make sure it's fully cured yeah, and stable. Because you have this 15 uh -huh. centimeters of concrete, and right, that has right. to, uh, you know, the humidity has to go out, and the process of the hydraulic hardening has to start and yeah. also come to an end, which takes 28 days. Sure, sure. Now this is a different pattern, like you said, this is the... Uh, the red block pattern. The red block pattern, the 18, no, 19 and a half inch. Uh, that 15, is... Uh, 50 centimeter. No, that's 25 centimeters. These are that's 25. Half, that's half of it, so this it's is, nine, yeah. almost 10 inch. This the is, length is 38, 25, Ah, got it, 25. this way. Ah. That's the, always the thickness. Oh. So 50 is like this. Well, that's a thick wall. Yeah. yeah, it's a thick wall. But look at castles. You know, my home is my castle. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, and not my my dog house. A site-built wall, right? I mean, that's that's double what we do in traditional construction, wood construction thickness. Yeah, I know. I mean, but yeah, I don't know. I I I, I love it, and I love the fact that this is all natural insulation. What are the extra bricks for? Oh, well, for the partition walls. So. In many cases, we could produce the partition walls in, in the red block plant as well. Yeah. But uh, we found out that, first of all, very often the, the position of partition walls gets changed by clients. Yeah. Because they say, no, that's too big now, that's too small now, this, I want to uh, have a different... Client. I know. Yeah, of course. They come in here and say, okay, mm-hmm. Ah, no, I don't want to have this partition wall here. I want to have it here. So right. fine, good. Uh, that's one reason, but this is not the case for all buildings. Uh, the main reason why we are not putting in the partition walls is this system of supporting the, yeah. the ceiling. Because if you already have the partition walls in here, you need very short pieces of this of this wood support. Right. So you cut the things very, very often. Yeah. And that takes a lot of time. So it's much quicker to to and easier for them to make the partition walls once the place is clean yeah. done. Then to make the partition walls goes very quick. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. What's that big key for? What's the guys in the mermaid movies, right? Yeah. Neptune. Neptune. Yeah, so that's that. Correct. Exactly. That's what's that for. And that's not heavy at all. It's light. A piece of aluminum. Yeah, it's just to lift up this yeah. beam. So you uh, see yeah, underneath we have insulation. Keep the heat up. Uh, to, to keep the warmth because here is no cellar underneath. So you need to have it insulated. Mm. There's a, is there a concrete under this? A concrete plate underneath. Yeah, yeah you yeah. will see that in the next building. You see it. And uh, on top of that, you get this concrete floor is about seven, eight centimeters. Okay. Uh, on minutes. which, yeah, on which you are placing the whatever yeah. tiles, uh, mm -hmm. tiles on it. So this is a wallboard, not plaster. Or is this plaster? This plaster. Wow, That's look how nice plaster. and clean that is. Yeah. All right. And that gets closed with the with the door. Uh, that must be the electrical. Nope. Uh, can be, can be, sorry. They mark it? Yeah. The problem that we have is that at the time we get the drawings from the architects, mm -hmm. they have no clue where they need sockets, right. uh, switches, whatsoever. And if we don't know where it gets, we cannot put it in. Mm -hmm. So they are still doing it the old stupid way, really, this stupid, uh, and sizzle on the construction side. No. Oh. Yeah. You mean the architect can't tell you where to put outlets and wires? No, not in the, in the, at the stage when we get the drawings of the house so we can produce. Because they're still working with the client. They're still working with the client. They are not, you know. They don't I, understand I'm, the efficiency of getting it all done up front. No, the, 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 I'm coming out of a time, really, it's, it's not joking. I'm coming out of a time where it was the standard saying that they said, the architect is finished with the plane scale one to 50 when the house is finished. You start with scale one to 100. Yeah. This was, that was the way that it was and still is in some cases, really. Building a house here, sometimes you think 
you develop the wheel once more. Over and with and over the again. next with the next house you develop the wheel once more again and again and again and again. But this is a, a mental problem. It's not a technical problem. It's a, a real mental and organization problem. It is. So if you're listening out there, you know, this is the problem that we have all around the world. Instead of planning and working through the planning process up front and then using manufacturing in the process for what it's made to do to get the efficiencies out of, you end up with a whole lot of extra work and reinventing the wheel on site over and over again. Correct. Spend the time up front, design the house, know where your electrical is going. It's not that hard. You got an outlet in the ceiling, you got some outlets on the walls. It's mind blowing that people haven't figured this out yet. Correct. Marcus, thank you so much for the factory tour. We're, We're right just okay. wrapping up a job site tour. The speed to reduce the construction time is 80% on a project like this. Is that in, correct? In terms of masonry. In terms of masonry. In terms of masonry. You know, this is, that's what, uh, what Wash uh, has the intention to do, yeah. to speed up all the other processes. So right. here we are speeding up the masonry process by, as I said, 80%. Yeah. We are much, much faster. The other crafts that happen here uh, still are made the old fashioned way and they still last. First of all, the organization on the construction site is a key issue, but also the optimization grade of that, what we can do in an industrial way. That's right. That would speed up the process again. So we made our part as a brick maker, we made it with the walls. That's right. So now we have to find out concepts and partners that work on the other issues. Like as you have seen, the floors, the concrete plates, the, right. the electrical, it, all electrical wiring, so many different things to do, which can be, and we have ideas for that, which can be automated and can be industrial produced. But this is a real, a real mind change, which needs to happen. Sure. It also needs to be a, a mind change in, from architects and planners, right. because they have to finish the building before we start making the first part. The building must be finished. So therefore, this is what all CAD programs are working on, not only three-dimensional, complete. Complete. So, so the complete design of a building with every yeah. screw. If you do that, the first important step is made for industrializing the rest of the process. Yeah, we call it design for manufacturing assembly. Yeah, okay. The FMA, right? Oh, okay. Design for manufacturing assembly and disassembly. There's DFMAD as well. And this product falls into it because if you wanted to, a lot of this material can all be reused and recycled. That's the beauty of it. But Correct. the most sustainable building is the one you don't have to build again. <laughs> Correct. We say that, right? I'm, it's starting to sink in for me as well. So here's the thing, right? The, this is 2.0. You're heading to 4.0 with wash. And like we were talking about inside, you're soon going to see this entire wall system include MEP installation and they're bringing all the trades together. They're writing all the tech stack to make that happen. And it's coming fast and furious. What's not to like about this? It's environmentally friendly. You have a block that has three systems in one in it. Uh, you're gonna start including the MEPs in it. You do not have to have air conditioning because it is so well insulated. Think about that. That's a 30 to 70,000 plus dollar savings per house just by itself. Correct. And when you add all these benefits up, it makes sense to me. Marcus, thank you so much for having us. Thank you. There Great you go. to have you here. The brain's behind it right there, <laughs> Marcus. I'm Dave Cooper. We are in Wells, uh, Austria. Stay tuned for more.